Hi everyone, welcome to Forensic Examinations 2. I've called from the rules because we're going to discuss um, obviously the rules, the guidelines that forensic examiners should follow. Um, it is going to be pretty dry stuff, uh, so feel free to skip on to the next video if, if it's not for you. Um, I will be knocking another one out straight after this, so hopefully the two of them will be up today. Um, I've spoken to a couple of people online who say that they're interested in becoming forensic examiners so I've decided to put this video together um, so that you know those people who are interested can have a look and know the kind of stuff that they should be doing or the rules that they should be following in order to produce solid evidence okay so like I said if you want to skip it knock yourself out if you are looking to be an examiner then bear with me on this one alright I've done a little crappy presentation um, we're going to cover what is forensics, the ACPO guidelines, seizure of items and acquisition. Okay, now the acquisition, we're just going to discuss it in this video. The acquisition is the actual creating uh, a copy of the evidence, okay, which, which is what you're going to be working on. The next video is going to show you how to perform an acquisition. This video is just going to discuss what they are and the kind of software that you can use, okay? So what is forensics? Uh, forensics is the preservation and collection of evidence. Um, People are under the misapprehension that um, when they delete a file on their computer, it isn't gone, which is true. Um, however, they also believe that that file will stay there forever, and as forensic magicians will come along and resurrect this file in the blink of an eye, and that isn't true. Okay, Data will eventually disappear. Um, we'll discuss that another time. Uh, in order to collect your evidence and, and to produce a solid case, there are rules you, that you should follow. Okay, So these are the ACPO guidelines. In the UK this is applicable, by the way. Um, then this isn't law either, this is um, these are just guidelines. Okay, You don't end up going to jail for not following them. However, you if you don't follow them, people are going to want to know why, because this is what all the police forces rely on, okay? Uh, you can download for free off the internet um, from uh, sevensafe.com. Um, they've got they, they've written this in, in conjunction with the police and it's up online. It's quite a big document, um, but we're just going to discuss the four principles here which you need to follow, okay? So, principle one, uh, no action taken by law enforcement agencies or their agents or anyone who's doing forensics, by the way, okay? This is, I mean, this document is aimed at law enforcement, but... Uh, if you're going to be producing evidence which is important you should follow these okay so sorry uh, no action taken by law enforcement agencies or their agents should change data held on a computer or storage media which may subsequently be relied upon in court uh, what that basically means is you should uh, never you will have to I'm sure at some point but you will you should never work on the original item so in this instance it will be your computer um, as a forensic examiner, you will find yourself in situations where you'll need to get hands-on on the computer itself. Uh, you will need to document everything that you do. You will need to get a witness to watch what you're doing as well. Um, if you can videotape yourself doing it, that is even better, okay? Because you go to court and say that you've used the actual computer itself, you, you're basically going to be changing evidence. Any defence is going to jump on you straight away and say, right, well, you've tampered with the evidence, you've, you know, whatever the guy is being done for, they're going to say, you put it there, all right? So get a witness, note everything. Like I said, if you can get a videotape, great. Principle two, in circumstances where a person finds it necessary to access original data held on a computer or, st or on storage media, that person must be competent to do so and be able to give evidence explaining the relevance and the implications of their actions. Um, like I said, uh, that is in, in circumstances where you need to actually jump on the guy's computer and have a look around, you are going to be changing evidence. Get a witness, get it recorded, um, and you need to be able to explain what evidence you have changed by browsing through their computer. Okay, so because you are going to be changing timestamps left, right, and center, you're going to be creating links to files that you've accessed. Um, and you need to be able to explain this, okay? Principle three, an audit trail or other record of all processes applied to 
computer-based electronic evidence should be created and preserved. An independent third party should be able to examine those processes and achieve the same results. Basically, that means note everything you do, produce reports on everything you do uh, during your examination, so that if another party comes along, they will be able to take your report, take your notes, take the original evidence and produce exactly the same results as you. All right? If they can't, people are going to want to know why. All right? So make sure that you keep that audit trail, um, save your notes and save them you know, somewhere secure, create, keep a copy because you know, things happen and things get lost and, and you know, if you work in law enforcement people can walk out. Okay? Uh, principle 4 the person in charge of the investigation, the case officer, has overall responsibility for ensuring that the law and these principles are adhered to. Okay, now that's another law enforcement reference, but your boss is the one who is overall responsible for you following these guidelines. You will get, you know, your ass kicked for not following them, but so will he or she. Um, at the end of the day, though, if you want to make a name for yourself in forensics, then Make sure you follow them because your name will get dragged through the mud. Seizure of items, okay? So um, you want you need to document everything, okay? Um, you need to you want to grab as much evidence as you can, as much information as you can on the situation because you never know how long it's going to be before you do your actual forensic examination, okay? When I've uh, worked for law enforcement agencies before. Some of them have had monumental backlogs, and you you might take this computer today, and you might not see it again for eighteen months. And in that time, you've gone and done eighteen months worth of forensic work on other computers, and you'll have forgotten that when you arrived there, it was switched on, and that there was a an external hard drive connected to it, and that this program was running, and this process was running, and blah blah blah. Okay, so like I say here, just document everything. Okay, if you can photograph it. That's even better. Um, I mean, a lot of people think it's overkill. I think it can be overkill, but there's nothing wrong in ensuring that you gather everything you can. You can't go back in time and, and recapture that thing that you missed, okay? So get everything. Uh, if the computer's on, photograph uh, or note any running software uh, or processes. Um, this is especially applicable in things like uh, BitLocker, where the actual BitLocker key is stored in RAM. You're going to need to do uh, a RAM dump. Going back to the principles, you're going to need to actually physically use that computer. Um, so just keep yourself covered. Um, when you're done, uh, if it's a desktop, pull the power cord out. If it's a laptop, pull the power cord out and then pull the battery out. Um, I know I said in the last video, uh, tell the person at the other end of the phone that they need to pull the power cord out. That's kind of old school thinking. The new ACPO guidelines suggest that you make a note of any running processes before you pull the junk out. Uh, a chain of custody, again, it, it's, it's a law enforcement thing, but it doesn't hurt for people, uh, corporate people to do this as well. Uh, Cover your ass, make sure that if anybody asks you where the computer was at any point in time after you've seized it, you can tell them, okay? So make sure that every change of hands is documented, make sure that it's documented where it's kept, all right? Um, and make sure it's kept in a secure store um, because you don't want the cleaner coming in and doing something with it, like switching it on or kicking it over. Uh, you don't want them hoovering up your screws if you do your, you know, disassembling at your desk, etc. Okay, it does happen, believe me. Right, acquisition, the end of this video. Acquisition is when you take a bit for bit copy of your evidence. Okay, so it can be, in this case, it has been a hard drive, it will be a hard drive. Um, in other cases, it could be a USB drive, it could be all, you know, whatever. But Acquisition is your bit for bit copying of digital evidence, right? Now, there's plenty of software that can do it, plenty of free software that can do it. Um, DD, and, and that is just basically DD, uh, will do a bit for bit copy. Um, I, w I won't be using that. I'll be using something similar, but I won't be using that because um, 
I, I just it, ma it makes me a little bit nervous, and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, Access Data um, they produce the Forensic Toolkit, which is outstanding, but they also produce the FTK Imager, okay, which is a free piece of software that you can just download. Um, which will take a bit for their copy. They also have FTK Imager Lite, which will run off a thumb drive. So, in a situation where you find yourself at a computer that can't be switched off, um, maybe it's encrypted. Okay, again, coming back to BitLocker, if you don't know about retrieving keys or doing RAM dumps, then you can use uh, FTK Imager to basically do a dump of that hard drive just by plugging your USB stick in and, and another media that you're going to copy the evidence to okay it's not forensically sound but as long as you follow the rules of noting everything and getting a witness you're all right um there's the sift workstation okay which uh by a guy called rob lees i really highly recommend that you get your hands on this okay you're going to need to sign up to their website um it's free it is free to sign up and it's free to download they do have some courses which um you know, I recommend you attend. But the SIFT workstation is wicked. It's all open source forensic stuff. It's great. Um, they've just released the newest version, which I believe is 2.1, which I'm going to be using. Um, and I really think you should go get your hands on it. There's also, which I don't know why I haven't put on the screen here, is uh, Helix Pro. All right. Now, I don't know why I didn't put on here, but I have got their website up. So it's efence, e-fence.com. And it's Helix 3, okay? Now this CD, uh, it's, a, it's a Linux based CD, uh, and you can do your acquisitions using this. Now I'm going to be using this Helix disk to do my acquisition, alright? Um, and it's it's great. It, again, this is free, alright? You, you, you can see in the red here, you don't get support, you don't you know get access to forms. You can pay a subscription um, and get access to all that. But if you just want the disk, you can download it. Okay, so uh, great, I can't get that working now. All right, um, I just want to show you one more thing before I draw this to a close. Uh, no, actually, I'm done. I'm going to keep it for the next video. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, please. I set myself up with an email address. Uh, wing me an email, but please do leave comments on the site, um, and I will respond to them all. So, thanks very much. Sorry for the delay in getting this one out, but I I did catch chicken pox, amazingly, and um, I've been out of action for a few days, but I'm back, and uh, I'm going to get rolling on this, okay? So, thanks very much. Sorry it's been a dry and a boring video, but these are just things you need to know, okay? So, thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.